What is going on to YouTube? I am Lamont at large and today I am at the Joe Bird Cemetery here once again in Huntsville, Texas and I want to tell you guys why I will never spit on a grave ever again and I also want to share my personal experience with the paranormal with said grave. Sean Derek O'Brien was executed July 11, 2006 by lethal injection, was one of six members of a fledging street gang drinking beer after initiating a new gang member. Elizabeth Pena, 16, and Jennifer Ertman, 14, were walking home from a friend's house, taking a shortcut along some railroad tracks when they stumbled upon the group. Evidence showed that the girls were gang raped for more than an hour, then were kicked and beaten before being strangled. A red nylon belt was pulled so tight around Jennifer Urban's neck that the belt snapped. The belt was later recovered from O'Brien's home. The bodies of the two teenage girls were found four days after they failed to return from the friend's house. When the bodies were discovered, they were decomposing and mummifying in the 100-degree heat. O'Brien, who confessed to police, was one of six gang members convicted in the case and the first to be executed. The ninth grade dropout, who had previous arrest for shoplifting a pistol, assault, and auto theft, also was a suspect in a murder six months before the girls were killed, but was never charged with the crime. Jose Medellin, who was sentenced to die and who O'Brien said was at one end of the belt being pulled around Urban's neck as he yanked on the other, had his case returned to the state courts under an order from then-President Bush. Medellin was among some 50 Mexican-born offenders who argued that under international law, they should have been allowed assistance from the Mexican consulate before trial. However, his claim was denied, and he was executed August 5, 2008. Two of the gang members, Efren Perez and Raul Villarreal, had their death sentences commuted to life in prison when the Supreme Court barred executions for those who were 17 at the time of their crimes. Peter Cantu, described by authorities as the ringleader of the gang, was executed August 17th of 2010. Amongst the sea of graves that you see before you are some of the unwanted, the forgotten, truly a pauper's grave if I do say so myself. This cemetery is primarily used for people that have done time in the Texas Department of Prisons, particularly here in Huntsville, Texas. Anybody that dies in the prison system and their family does not come to claim their bodies, they are buried here. Some of the graves out here don't have a stone or they're simply marked with their prison numbers, an X being in front of the number for the executed. Uh, one of the well-known individuals buried at this very cemetery is, of course, the most famous resident, Henry Lee Lucas. So now that I've told you a little bit about the grave that I spat on and the history behind that person, so let me tell you what happened to me. A couple years ago, when I barely started my channel, I came here to look for the grave of Sean Derek O'Brien. I had heard his story on a YouTube channel called Horror Stories. I'm a big fan of that channel. It's one of my top five favorite channels. And I remember watching that video on Horror Stories a few years previous. So I wanted to see the grave of this scumbag. So I'm walking in the cemetery as I'm walking now and I find his grave. Didn't take me very long. The cemetery is not very big. And I remember when Horror Stories was telling the story of what he and his other punk friends did to those two innocent girls. A very disgusting, I felt, I remember I felt sick to my stomach when I was listening to the story. And out of anger and just some pent up rage in me. I spat on that grave. 
Not once, I spat on it twice. And I never have spat on a grave before that day. I spat on the grave, then I left, jumped in my van, and I headed over to Walmart to stay for the night before continuing on my way down towards Houston. The next day, I wake up, I jump in my van, go to McDonald's, I get some coffee. Just as I'm about to jump on the freeway, my van starts acting up, starts sputtering, and my van died on a one-lane bridge right before the entrance of the freeway. And I was blocking traffic. I'm wondering what the hell's going on. I'm trying to start my vehicle. It ain't starting worth the damn. Luckily, however, there happened to have been a tow truck that was three cars behind me. And he offered to tow me off the bridge and back to the Walmart for free. And I said, sure. He was a very, very nice guy. He did not have to do that. But he was kind enough to at least get me off of that bridge. So I'm broke down. I don't know what's wrong with my van. And I called my buddy, Anthony, who lives about 30 miles to the south. And I said, hey, can you come and uh, pick me up? I'm with my trailer. Van's broken down. So he comes up. We get the trailer. We get the van. We tow it all back down to Conroe. He has a buddy that's a mechanic. I take my van to the mechanic so he could check it out. He said, I'll give me a few days and I'll let you know what's wrong with it. So after I drop my van off, I jump on my scooter and I start heading towards my buddy's house. It's about eight miles down the road. I'm on my scooter for no more than 45 seconds and then it starts acting up and then it breaks down on me. I very rarely have vehicles break down on me. I mean, breakdowns do occur, but it's pretty rare because I keep my vehicles in pretty good condition and I take care of them and I do the proper maintenance. So to have my van break down and then literally 45 seconds after I'm on my scooter, it breaks down. I didn't think anything of it. Oh, well, you know, stuff happens. I get a lift to my friend's house and I didn't really think nothing of it. Now I'm kind of trapped in the middle of nowhere. I don't have a vehicle. And uh, a few days goes by a Saturday night. I'm just hanging out in my trailer uh, watching videos on YouTube. And I hear a knock on my trailer. Now, I wasn't laying down. I was sitting in my trailer by all intents and purposes. I'm sitting in my trailer. And when I hear the knock, I get up and I open it because I'm thinking it's my buddy Anthony. But uh, no, it was not my friend Anthony. There was nobody there. And... I'm looking around the trailer. Now, mind you, my friend lives in the middle of nowhere. Now, he does have neighbors, but it's the kind of neighbors where everybody's like has their own couple acres of land. And it's 1 o'clock, 1.15 in the morning. Nobody's out in that neighborhood doing anything. That neighborhood is a ghost town after around 7 to 8 o'clock at night. Now, I didn't think anything about it. I was thinking, okay, maybe an animal banged against it but I specifically remember knock 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 but nothing's really bothering me so I just kind of go ahead and disregard it and then about 20 minutes later I hear another knock 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 I open the door and Anthony's in front of my trailer with a gun and I say what the hell's going on here he, sell, he says to me he says Lamont hey I heard somebody knock on my window can you come with me to check out like my uh, the other side of my property and I said okay and 
we walk to the back of his property and this property is on at least three acres of land and I'm behind him. He has a gun. I'm thinking this is a little bit weird, but whatever. And so we're walking and he says, hey, stand in back of me. I'm just going to fire my gun off two times to chase off whoever was doing that. And I'm like, okay, this guy's just firing a gun. Whatever. Pop, pop. He has a 40 cal. It's a pretty loud gun. And he just fires it in the ground towards the back of his fence. Nobody lives on the other side of that fence. It's just woods. And that's it. So we start walking back and he says, I'm not crazy, man. He says, that's the first time ever in my life I've ever heard anybody like knock on my on my door. He goes, I, I live in the middle of nowhere. My neighbors aren't gonna come knocking on my door at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. If they need something or an emergency happen, they'll just call me. And I'm just thinking to him, I'm like, you know, you do, you just probably just hearing things. You're probably, you're tripping. This dude is tripping. And so we talk for about maybe 20 minutes or so, just about anything. And he's swearing up and down. He says, man, I'm telling you, it was a knock like somebody knocked. It wasn't an animal or anything like that. And I tell him, I said, I don't know, man. I really don't know. So he goes to sleep. I go to my trailer. 30 seconds later, it all came back to me. I said, oh, crap. I said, I, I remember that somebody knocked on my trailer, too. And Anthony is a pretty serious guy. He's not like a jokester. He doesn't really joke. I've actually never heard him tell a joke in my life. He's just like a serious type of person. And then I'm thinking like something's weird. Something is going on here. And then I remember the grave that I spat on. And I started getting a weird vibe. And I'm like, because I don't know if I particularly believe in ghosts. This isn't a channel where I talk about the spirits or paranormal or anything like that. And I don't do it for views, trust and believe. But honestly, I heard a knock. My friend Anthony heard a knock. My van broke down, my scooter broke down. And it all happened within a few days after me spitting on his grave. And from that day forward, I promised myself never to spit on a grave ever again. I don't necessarily believe in the paranormal. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying anything of the kind. But what I am saying, though, is that it just is a weird thing how that happened, how I could just hear a knock and I go out and there's nobody there. And you got to believe me when I say this, nobody lives there. Nobody lives anywhere around there. Could it have been a, a, a prankster? I don't know. You tell me. This here is the grave of Sean Derek O'Brien. He was executed on July the 11th, 2006 for the rape and double murder of 14-year-old Jennifer Ertman and 16-year-old Elizabeth Pena. Crime occurred in Houston. Him and five of his friends were hanging out drinking beer and they noticed the two girls walking by the train tracks and they viciously attacked those two poor girls, raped them repeatedly over and over for over an hour and then killed both of them before slicing their throats and strangling them. 